Hi guys, uh, my name is Andrew Wells, welcome to this video and today we're going to be talking about fireworks. Okay guys, so I want to talk to you about fireworks today. Uh, in the UK we've got that time of year where we're doing a lot of fireworks shows. Um, it's around about the 5th of November which basically means that we'll be shooting uh, fireworks display to which actually celebrates Guy Fawkes night here in the UK. Obviously around the rest of the world you have your own different celebrations, different time of year. Uh, New Year is a very good time for fireworks. There's lots of fireworks shows going on around uh, New Year, especially in the big cities. Um, and then you have things like in America, you have the uh, Independence Day on the 4th of July. So there's always lots of fireworks shows going on around. So uh, I thought I'd just have a have a, uh, a chat to you about in terms of what settings, what camera equipment and that kind of thing we should be using for fireworks. Okay, um, so the first thing I would say to people is if you're going to plan on going to a, a big show, um, a big display, arrive early because that way at least you'll get a good position, you'll get a good location in terms of where you're going. Use things like Google and uh, Flickr, go and have a look at photographs from previous year's shows to actually see where, it's, where is a good location, what kind of composition might you get, um, how is your framing going to be. So they're useful things to actually do. Um, but above all, arrive early so you're arriving in daylight as opposed to night time and you can actually set everything up and be ready. It might mean you've got a little bit of hanging around, but that's worth doing if you're going to get the right shots. The second thing you need to do is make sure you take a tripod, a nice sturdy tripod, because um, we're going to be using shutter speeds really more than a second. So you can't be hand-holding your camera, so we need to lock down onto a tripod uh, and make sure you actually hold the camera sturdy. The other thing you'll probably need is a cable release. Now basically a cable release allows you to fire the, the camera without actually touching the camera. So um, and that just means we don't get any camera shake, you don't get the, the wobbly bits on the fireworks or anything like that. So uh, a cable release is really important. You can fire it from the camera if you don't have a cable release, just be very, very wary that you might actually have um, the, the camera sort of moving. So uh, try not to move the camera, try not to kick the tripod and all those kind of things. Okay, the next thing to think about is actually the what composition you're going to get. So are we going to go for a view format? Um, so in other words, a landscape format. Or are we going to go for upright? Because remember, fireworks are going up and they're going in that manner. So if you're going to get the base of the fireworks in as well, maybe you need to be shooting upright in a portrait mode as opposed to landscape. Or at least be aware of how your tripod works so quickly in the dark, you can undo it, flip it over and shoot in both formats. So think about that. In terms of a lens, um, you probably don't want to be going necessarily uh, too wide um, because you're probably going to be some distance away from them anyway if you're going to get a good view. Um, so just think about your composition in terms of that. Don't necessarily go wide, but if you've got a good zoom that will enable you to zoom in as well and crop in on some of the fireworks, that's quite a good thing as well. So just be prepared to do that. Have a think about the um, focusing. So how are you going to focus on this? So one method would be to actually lock the camera or lock the focus off. So put it into manual focus, then focus on infinity and then just come back a fraction. So you're not quite at infinity, but you're certainly you know, far enough away. That's one way of doing it. The other way is to actually put it in autofocus. Um, when the first lot of fireworks go up, use the autofocus to actually focus on it. Or again, use the manual focus to actually focus on that first firework. Get it pin sharp because they do last quite a while. So you should have enough time to do it. Um, and then make sure it's in manual focus from there on and you'll know that you've actually got all the fireworks pinned sharp. So that's, that's one thing I would probably recommend doing in terms of focusing. Um, the next thing to think about is the shutter. Now, when we're talking about fireworks, you've got to, you've got to kind of think what's going on here. So um, in terms of shutter and aperture, uh, the shutter is really recording how the firework travels through the photograph. So remember, shutter actually affects time. All right, so it's not affecting the exposure as such because the firework, if it starts in one position, fits into the other position, well, it's illuminated throughout. So that's not affecting the exposure, it's just affecting time. So where does the firework burst to? And if you think about fireworks, they don't actually take that long. So if you were to leave a shutter open for, say, 15 seconds, it's just going to be full of lots of different fireworks and they're all going to overlap each other and it's going to look a mess. So the reality is you're probably only looking at exposures between, say, one and five seconds. Okay? And this is why we use a cable release. And what we do is we actually stick the camera in what we call bulb mode, or B setting. 
and that literally means when you press the shutter the shutter will actually stay open until you actually release it again okay so you have control how long the shutter stays open and that's quite good because sometimes you'll hold the shutter in there's no firework going off and then all of a sudden the firework burst will go off and as soon as it's finished you can let go again okay so it's a good way of controlling it so the actual exposure is going to be controlled by the aperture so the, the actual hole inside your lens depending on how, back that, how big that is determines how much light actually comes in so what you need to do is probably have an aperture roughly about f11 or f13 because fireworks are actually quite bright so we don't want them going over bright and you've got to remember there's going to be all that smoke and sulfur coming off the fireworks as well and that's going to get in create glare so you'll probably only need uh, an actual sort of aperture about f13 certainly when i was shooting earlier on that's the kind of um, aperture range i was using and again iso keep it as low as possible you don't any noise happening in the photographs so keep the, that, that down as much as possible. If you've got noise reduction in your camera, turn it off, okay? So we don't want the noise reduction, seeing these little specks of um, fireworks and thinking it's noise and, and erasing it. So uh, turn off the noise reduction. So yeah, F13, somewhere around about there. Be prepared, you might want to change it. Have a look at the photographs as you go along. It's a beauty about digital nowadays. Um, and just set it on bold mode in terms of the, uh, the photographs. And again, ISO 100, 200, keep it as noise-free as you possibly can at night. The less noise we actually have there, the much, much better it is. And the only other things is make sure you've got a torch. Um, you're going to be messing around in the dark, and it's just handy sometimes to flick a torch on, see your controls, flick it off again. So uh, take a torch with you so you know where everything is. Um, and above all, be safe. Um, you know, you don't want to be putting yourself in a position where you're going to you know, get in the way or anything like that. So be safe when you're actually out there doing it. The other thing to try is actually have a go at doing fireworks in your garden. Um, certainly here in the UK, we, we do a lot of sort of garden parties, setting our own fireworks off and that kind of thing. So, you know, have a go at um, shooting those. Uh, I did a few of those tonight, um, had some fun shooting that. And the other thing you can shoot with that is things like sparklers. Um, you can actually get some great photos of kids doing sparklers and that sort of thing. Um, and again, you know, just having fun uh, shooting all those kind of things. Um, I know in mine, I had great fun actually just coming up with, you know, my brand name. Um, yeah, so have fun, uh, stay safe, uh, but hopefully those kind of tips there you've got there will give you a good grounding in terms of going away um, and get some really good images. Okay, so uh, hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, then please do click on like. If you want to see more videos, click on subscribe. And if you've got any comments, please leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, thanks for watching.